Now, aside from some of the upgraded cooling capabilities and motherboard support, uh, one of the unique features of the Tower 300 case is, of course, its unique design. Now, this is an octagonal design, meaning it's got eight distinct sides to it, which I personally think looks really cool. Uh, the other unique feature to this case is the optional stand that you can get. Now, I do have that stand with me today, and we'll take a look at that here in just a little bit. Uh, but that gives you the ability to rotate this horizontally and display it kind of in a completely unique orientation. As you can see here, the Tower 300 case is slightly larger than the Tower 200 case, but it does give you quite a bit more in the cooling department, which we'll get into later in this video. When compared to the Tower 500 case, the Tower 300 is significantly smaller, but the 500 supports EATX and ATX motherboards, which the Tower 300 doesn't. Now looking around the back here, we've got an opening up at the top. Now this is where all of your cables uh, are going to enter. Uh, and this is gonna be your HDMI cable, USB cables, things like that, that will connect to your motherboard. But you can go ahead and put a firm grip right here. And to get the top cover off, there's no screws or anything. Just give it a good firm tug pull it up and it should just pop right off. There's just some of these compression fittings here that kind of enter into the posts up here. We do get an air filter, little uh, clip right here. You just pull that and the air filter comes out. You can clean that and put it back in. Now the top cover itself, it's plastic around the shroud, but this is a metal piece that's in here, which might be good if you're looking to paint things or do some sort of mods and things like that. You can remove this top metal piece. It's not really designed to be removed, but you could remove it. There's a number of screws around the perimeter of that. So I've laid the case over on its back and this exposes the top fans and the IO panel here. Now these fans are mounted to a cage right here and we can go ahead and remove that cage as a whole assembly. There's two thumb screws, one on each side and you just loosen those up, kind of lift it out and there's two tabs in the rear that are engaged. We just pull that up. Now they've just initially kind of inserted the cables down in the back here and you can take that out. Now it does include two of the Thermaltake CT140 fans. Uh, these are included. They're the only two included fans with this case, uh, but these are decent fans to get you started. I imagine most of you are gonna be replacing these. Uh, but these fans kind of connect into a daisy chain system. It just has a four pin PWM connector for these fans. Now the top of the case supports 240 millimeter fans, of course, or it supports 220 millimeter fans. Uh, it's got the brackets for both of those. There is no radiator support in the top of this case. Uh, fans are the only thing that's supported because all of your IO is gonna be right here next to these. There's really just no room for a radiator there. So the IO panel on the top here, it is removable by two screws. Uh, the panel does include a USB 3.2 type C connector, uh, two USB 3.0 connectors, uh, the audio ports, microphone and headphone jack. Uh, obviously it's got a power button and a reset button and a hard drive and power LED on it. But there are two screws, one on each side of the IO panel here. If you go ahead and remove those, uh, the panel is easy to remove. Generally, you're not going to need to remove this, but in case you're doing modifications, cleanings, things like that, or it eases your installation procedure, you can take this out. And the cables are just wire tied in there and it's got a, some pretty good cable management brackets here holding this cable in. But there you have it, you got plenty of length on the IO panel and easy to remove and replace and modify should you need to. Coming around to the back of the case, there is a single dust filter back here. It's magnetically attached, so it's easy to remove and clean and put back on when you're ready. And then to remove the entire back panel, there's just a little clip up here and just give it a kind of firm pull and it will pop right off. And then there's a little lip at the bottom down here, kind of holding it on, just wiggle it off and it comes out no problem. Uh, again, it's just kind of clipped in with these pins. There's no screws or anything you need to get this off. Now the back panel uh, has space for 220 millimeter fans or 240 millimeter fans, depending on what you want to do. Now, once you get the rear panel off, this exposes the rear drive cage. This is very similar to all of the other tower cases that I've worked on, uh, but there's two thumb screws that hold this in. Once you get those undone, you can just lift up on it and you can remove it. Now it's just got two little tabs here, plus the thumb screws that hold it in, nice and easy to get out of here. But once you get this out, the storage support on this is two two and a half inch drives or two three and a half inch drives. There is one more drive sled down here uh, on the bottom of the case, which we'll talk about in just a second. There are some holes here that are marked fan, and I imagine you could get a 120 millimeter fan into this thing. But if you're gonna have it right here and have rear fans on the back panel, you're not gonna be able to fit all of those. So I, I don't think I would put a fan here. Now that exposes the rear of the case here and embedded in this are these flexible kind of cable management arms. I really do like these. Uh, there's three on this side and two over on this side. They are removable by a single screw. I really do kind of like you know, that you can get a bunch of cables up in these corners here and keep them in there. It's kind of a really cool design. 
the rubber cable management grommet is removable here should you need to get that out modification or cleaning. Now down here on the bottom is where you install your power supply of course. Uh, it does have a mounting bracket. You will need to remove that and then attach that to your power supply. It's just four screws here that hold that on. Now you normally won't need to remove this bottom power supply bracket, but it is removable should you need to do that for cleaning, installation, modifications, things like that. Now to get that power supply bracket out of here, you just want to lay it down on its back. Now there is a dust filter on the bottom which has just got a little lip on it and you can pull and you can remove that. Then there are four screws, two on each side to remove this power supply bracket. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. But once you get the four screws out, it just pulls right out. And of course you can modify it, clean it, do whatever you need to do. Again, you're not gonna really need to remove that in most cases. Now, once you get this all installed, there is no IO panel in the top of the case. The other tower cases, you pull the top cover off and you get access to this IO panel. But because they've upgraded some of the cooling capabilities here, the fans are right here. So you really can't get to that. So the glass is kind of removable from the front here. You just basically press the front glass in. There's a mechanism that catches it and then releases it. So if you just press here, the front top of the glass will release. You can grab it and then just kind of pull and pull it off. Now, once you get that opened, of course, you get access to the entire inside of the PC case. Now, these two side pieces here, uh, there's no press mechanism to get those off. You basically just want to kind of give it a firm grip and pull it off from each side. Of course, all of the glass is protected by films on both front and back, so very nice. You'll want to remove those once you get your installation all complete. But we'll set those aside for now and go ahead and take out the other side. Now let's go ahead and move over to the right side of the case. Now the right side is where you're going to install your AIOs and some more cooling fans, depending on what kind of cooling solution you're going to do. Uh, to get the right side panel off of here, just another lip at the top. Just give it a firm pull and it will just disengage. Uh, this is magnetically attached, so again, no tools required. It's easy to do. There is a filter over here on the right hand side. It just kind of pops out of some little clips and you can wash that and easily put it back when you're ready. But once you get that right side panel removed, here is the fan and AIO mounting bracket. There's two screws at the top that hold that on, so let's go ahead and remove those. And once you get the two screws out, it just kind of releases here at the top and it's just got a couple of little tabs in the bottom of the case that hold that in. Uh, once you get that out, you can mount your fans, your AIOs, whatever cooling solution you're going to do. Now the cooling support options that you get on the right side here for fans and air cooling, you're gonna get up to three 120 millimeter fans or three 140 millimeter fans. Radiator support over here is gonna be up to a 360 millimeter radiator or up to a 420 millimeter radiator. Now over here on the left side of the case, the left side panel is just the same thing. In fact, these should be interchangeable. Just give it a kind of firm tug. You can pull it off. Again, you get the dust filter over here as well. It's exactly the same design and construction. So on the left hand side, there's no cooling support mentioned in the book. Uh, it doesn't even include the mounting bracket for fans or radiators. However, it's important to note that down in the bottom of the case, the tabs are here for this mounting bracket from the right side. So it fits down in there just fine. And the screw holes are here and tapped in the side of the case. So this rail does fit in here should you want to mount fans and radiators over here. Now obviously your graphics card is going to be right here. So I think traditionally you're not going to be mounting this over here. But if you're doing some fancy modifications or some other type of installation, you could probably order this from Thermal Take and put fans or radiators over here as well. Now looking on the inside of the case here, uh, it does come with the accessory pack and it's just kind of wire tied in here. Now the first piece we'll talk about that comes in the accessory kit is this plastic power supply cover. Its intent is to fit right here next to the metal cover. And it's just got two tabs in the back that that engages and then clips into the front of the case. And it looks pretty good here and gives you some holes for power cables and things like that to go through. Uh, all of the tower cases have had this piece in here and you can remove it, just pull the little clip and pull it out and you're ready to go. If you put the cover in, your maximum GPU length is gonna be 280 millimeters. Uh, if you remove this, which you would if you're gonna use a bigger card, uh, would give you up to a 400 millimeter uh, GPU over there. So make sure you just check the spec of your GPU and whether you can use the cover or not. So the next piece that this includes is a replacement front panel here. Now this has the spot for the LCD panel. This is the same LCD screen that's used on the upgrades for like the Tower 200, the 100, and even the 500. 
it does not include the LCD panel itself. You still need to purchase that from Thermaltake, uh, but if you happen to have one already, uh, you've already got the bracket for it. So I think this is a pretty cool addition here, even though it doesn't have the panel. There could be some use cases where you would be thankful that you have this and don't have to go spend another hundred bucks just to get the kit. Uh, on the back of this, it does have some magnetically attached dust filters on both sides. Uh, obviously, the rest of the components are going to be some additional uh, case clips here, zip ties, and the standard screws. Now, back over to the right side, this exposes the hard drive cage over here. There's a single thumb screw that holds this hard drive cage in. Uh, once you remove that, the little cage comes out, and this will hold a single 2.5 inch drive or a single 3.5 inch drive. Now, looking back inside the case, uh, this metal power supply plate can come out. There's four screws that hold it in. There's two up here at the front. And then around the back there are two more screws holding this. But once you get the screws out, the plate will just lift right out. Obviously you could run it without this plate if you desired. It looks better with it in, in my opinion. Uh, now the plate does support a fan, a single 120 millimeter fan or a single 140 millimeter fan. Now the front panel that we spoke about earlier is removable. There's a little lip just down here on the bottom. You just put your finger down in there and kind of pull and it just unclips. Nice and easy to do. Uh, it's got a magnetic dust filter on the back of that. But if you're going to upgrade to the panel using the LCD panel, uh, you're just going to mount your LCD panel into the face plate. Uh, which is just two screws, nice and easy to do. And then this basically just pops back in place right where this one left off and you are ready to go. So, but we'll remove that for now. And then the two side plates here are not removable. Uh, the filters are removable though. So I like to just put a little screwdriver in here and then you can undo those filters. Just push that in there. You gotta kind of work that filter out a little bit, but no big deal. And then it just kind of fits back in. Once you clean them, you're ready to go. Now this case supports ITX and micro ATX officially this time on the Tower 200. It wasn't really clear even though it kind of will take it and it works just fine. Uh, this one does officially support micro ATX. So I just wanted to give you a basic idea of what a mini ITX board looks like as opposed to a micro ATX board. Uh, the mini ITX board obviously is smaller and it's kind of centered here in the middle of the case, but it still looks pretty good overall. You got lots of working room all the way around it. And the micro ATX uh, form factor, I'm becoming a big fan of that, uh, fills out the case nicely, still gives you lots of room all the way around. And here it is with the graphics card. I think this is a sharp looking setup personally. Now, one thing they've done better than the Tower 200 is over here on the right-hand side from the rear or the left from the front is they've given you this nice slot over here. Now, you still have to loop all of the I.O. cables kind of sharply around itself. Just is kind of a tight fit, but there's lots of working room to get all those cables through, and it looks pretty good overall. Uh, the maximum CPU heat sink height, if you're going to use air cooling, is 210 millimeters. So make sure you check the specifications of your cooler if you're gonna do that. Now the one area of concern that I have about this case is the motherboard of course is gonna fit flush right above this line here even with the PCI slots. But there is no cover here. The fans of course are gonna fit on the top and then your motherboard IO panel is gonna sit right here. Now there's no cover here. There's nothing to fit here. So basically your cables as they come out of your motherboard are gonna snake over to the left here and then they're going to come up through this hole in the back and then through these holes in the top and out that top, top cover in the rear. So the, that's okay and that's, that's well enough. I don't have a problem with that necessarily. Uh, what I don't know if I like is where your motherboard sits right here, there's no cover in this area. So just you're going to see all of your cabling coming out of your motherboard right here. And I, don't, I just don't particularly love the look to be honest with you. Now, I do wonder, back in the back of the case here are two tapped screw holes. I do wonder if a cover is forthcoming from Thermaltake. Maybe they didn't have it ready yet. Maybe it's going to be an upgrade, something you can add on to it. A cover that is designed to bolt into this and cover that area up. So what I thought about doing was maybe developing, you know, like something I can do on the 3D printer. It wouldn't be too hard to make some cover here. I don't know how that'll look being 3D printed. Might be able to do some multicolor stuff. I'll have to mess around with that maybe. But let me know in the comments below what you think of there being no cover here. Would you be interested in a cover being here? Now, somebody maybe already has developed it. I don't know. Now let's talk about this chassis stand kit real quick. Now this allows you to mount the case horizontally, which is kind of a really unique look. So let's take a look at what comes in this kit, kind of how to get the case mounted on it, and let's see how it looks. 
So the kit does come with a new end cap in whatever color you order it in. So obviously you're going to want to match this up to your case or you could mix and match. Who am I to say that you can't mix and match colors to whatever you like? Uh, but either way, it comes with a new end cap, which includes a new dust filter. It's uh, really essentially the same as the top one, other than it doesn't have the holes for the I.O. port there. It comes with the base of the stand itself. It's very cool. And then it comes with the two arms here, which kind of have a rubberized uh, grip on there to kind of keep it all from falling because it doesn't appear to me that it really kind of screws into this. It just kind of sets down in. Now, step one for this is to go ahead and remove the feet on the bottom of the case and the dust filter, of course, because uh, the new end cap has its own dust filter in it, so you won't need this one anymore. There's two screws for each foot here to get these off. So go ahead and pull that out. So you're gonna get the feet removed and go ahead and set these in a safe place because maybe you'll need them later. But once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and attach the new bottom plate here. And it attaches just like the top one does. You just put this post in and kind of clip it in and you are ready to go on it. So the next step is to attach the legs. It looks like you want to put the front end in first and you kind of got to compress the little clips here. And it is a relatively tight fit, but you just got to kind of press it down until it clips in. So we'll do the second one here. All right, so I've got the base built and I've got the Tower 300 back together. And so let's go ahead and test fit it in the case here. Now, obviously it's got rubber uh, pads here to kind of protect the case finish, but let's go ahead and take it, tip it over on its side. Yeah, it looks like it just kind of mounts down on here. But basically you're just gonna kind of set it down on this flat edge here, down into the channel. And that fits pretty good, feels very stable. Even with this loaded up with a bunch of components, I think it'll be just fine. All right, well, there you have it. There is the horizontal chassis kit. I think it looks really cool. I'll have to kind of see what it looks like when I get the build all done in it and get it on the desk. Now, this obviously takes up a pretty big footprint uh, being like this, so you'll want to have the right amount of space. So again, let me know in the comments below what you think of the IO panel area on this case. That's, I think, one of the weak areas, and hopefully a cover is forthcoming or I'm going to design one and 3D print it, perhaps a little bit of an amateur in that realm. Uh, but let me know what you think of that, and let me know what you think of the horizontal stand kit for this case. Would you use it? Do you like the look of it? What do you think overall of the case? Anyways, I'm going to do a build in this case over the next week, and I will come back and do another video and show you uh, how that turns out for me and kind of what I think about it. Uh, you know, based on my previous experiences uh, with the tower cases, I don't expect there's going to be a whole lot of problems in this case. I think it'll be pretty fun to build in. Uh, I don't expect a whole lot of cooling problems with it. You know, this has definitely got the ability more so than the other tower cases, uh, you know, for some cooling performance. So anyways, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.